Today we're going to test the paint and restore rims with airbrush. It's not going to be a fully successful restoration, so don't judge me too hard. But it's definitely a good example of using and testing the regular oil-based paint with the airbrush. And meanwhile, doing the restoration of BMW M2 rims. Before anything, let's check what I did wrong and what I meant by not fully successful. First, I purchased the wrong sample paint. In some cases, it's hard to find the right paint, especially for the BMW although it's just two ounce sample size but it was more than enough for two rings. The airbrush has really fine sprain power but it also depends on the needle. We'll talk about that a little later. The second thing I didn't mix paint good enough or shake it since it's metallic and it has some particles in it they got to be mixed very well but on the other hand it's really thick paint and it's great to test the airbrush with it. We also can use the paint reducer, but more than less, it just test run. So I guess it's okay. The third and the last mistake, the preparation. I was going too fast with sanding the rim, so the outcome isn't that good. Let's begin, shall we? I start with preparing the rims. They had to be washed properly. You can even use the brake dust remover, which will be even better. I use film drill brush in combination of soap, pretty easy and fast to remove majority of dirt. An upcoming step will be using the sandpaper or sponge before painting, so the surface don't have to be perfect, but it's better if it is. Nice to mention that if you're trying to blend the paint as I did, the outcome will not be the best, even if you have the proper paint. It's best to completely paint the rim but if you still want to do the certain area, it's best to find the breaking point like a shape. If there is a certain area on the rim that has an angle, that's the way to match it. Since the shade will be different and it'd be really hard to see the difference. Next stage of preparing is sanding. I use multi-tool as this is the fastest way to grind unwanted material or damaged area. Unfortunately, it's not that precise. Ideally, if you have the rotary machine with one to two inch sanding pad, which will get you the best and fastest result. On the other hand, the pretty known method and cheapest one is just sandpaper and piece of wood. I did start with 400 grit on messed up areas and 800 on sort of touch-ups. After removing the damaged areas we need to smooth the edges. If there will be even slightest angle it be visible after we paint it. All of that artwork or shaping I did with 800 grit and hand block. After we did fine touches we can get to the 1500 grit sandpaper. I use 2000 grit to scratch the clear coat that will be painted. Also we need to make sure that we don't have deep scratches and surfaces flat to the touch. Next step is as simple as covering the areas we don't want to have painted. I did cover the rubber air nozzle as well as blending area. Unfortunately those rims doesn't have distinct transition so I did as simple as random spot on the spokes. I know that in this situation it was smarter to just spray it completely which I did at the end but now we're pretty much ready to paint. Time for the airbrush. The whole reason of this video. First of all why do you want to use one? Simple answer is to use the regular can paint and reduce the price of expensive compressor and most important it's the size. Compared to 10 gallon compressor you can use one gallon or bigger. I have the California Tools one gallon ultra quiet compressor. As you may know that the airbrush can work with as low as 15 CFM but it only be suitable with really thin paint as a for oil-based paint you need at least 40 but better if 60 CFM and 1 gallon tank that will give you good and steady flow that is strictly from my experience as for using generic airbrush compressor that you can buy on Amazon for 50 bucks it's not worth it if you're really looking for smaller solution that one will be the best but the price is similar to the one I have which is $130. As for the airbrush, I used the 3 mil needle as I didn't have the 5 mil. The 3 mil did well and I had really fine coat, but it's too slow. So 5 mil needle will be the best. Also brush with container underneath is ideal. First you can buy multiple of those containers and store different paint inside of them. And it's pretty convenient compared to the one with small container on the top. For the headline or repair video, it, it will be coming in near future and for the equipment and tools I'm using it's in the description. I did start with testing with piece of paper it's nice to see the pattern it has and also to 
adjust the flow. Since the three mil needle is pretty tight and pain is thick, coating the area was a little slow, but in meanwhile pain dry instantly due to the high air flow. There are many flaws in the particular setup, but overall I was enjoying of using the airbrush. It's nice to have it in your inventory. It definitely can be used in many scenarios, so I would suggest you to spend at least 50 bucks on quality too. Let's get back to the result before clear coat application. We can clearly see that the color is much lighter as well as pretty harsh line between two. In this case I thought that accurate sanding will work, but I was wrong. In this portion I was using the 15 and 2000 green sandpaper as wet sanding. The transition ends up being pretty noticeable as distinct color difference made too visible. Even after a clear coat, we can see pretty harsh transition. Speaking of the clear coat, you can cover the rim in full or just blend it, as it's not going to be the same outcome as with painting. After 2 and 3000 wet sanding, clear coating and polishing, by the way, polishing was a little disaster since you cannot use the tool in between of the spokes, so you have to polish it manually. And overall look is pretty good if we're looking from two feet distant. But up close, you can see lots of imperfections. First, it's wrong paint. Second, the lines was left after sanding and the surface doesn't look natural. At the end, I did repaint one of the rims in full. I ended up with much better result, but I was out of paint at this point. So my testing had some sort of success. If I would start with complete repaint, the two ounce tester should be enough for two rims, but that would be pretty thin layer of base coat. So if you order some paint, you'll be better off with two ounce per rim, or let's say one by one square feet. If you guys did like the video, if so, leave me a comment and subscribe for future projects. As I'm planning to use the airbrush with the car pen, I have everything ready for the project, so the 4 Transit Connect will be the test subject. Adios!